Good evening, everybody. Welcome to your evening edition. Sharon is having a very rare night off, and I. And this is HQ Trivia, the show that gives you dough for what you know. We had more people than could fit into Old Trafford playing this afternoon. It was amazing, and I'm really excited to be back here tonight because there are even more of you playing now. 102,579. That's Wembley is overstuffed, and as a London boy, that definitely makes my head spin. Yeah, wow. Sharon, I will do my best to look after your peeps for you. Let's keep it going. To hard. With each question, you'll have 10 seconds from when I start talking to tap the answer. Get a question correct and you can move on to the next one. Get all 12 correct and you will win or split today's prize. We had five winners this afternoon. Will you be a winner today? At stake is a fantabulous £550 and all you have to do is stay sharp, stay focused and stay lucky. Are you ready? Let's go straight to question one. Which of the following is a former British WBC World Heavyweight Boxing Champion? Frank Bruno, Rocky Balboa, Frank N. Stein. Frank Bruno, Rocky Balboa, or Frankenstein. However you pronounce it, if you went for Frankenstein here, then you've punched your own lights out. Even Mike Tyson didn't try to bite this guy. It's Frank Bruno. Frank Bruno, the answer we were looking for, 79,000 of you, 701 got it right. Well done to you. Bruno won the title in 1995, only to lose it to none other than Mike Tyson in his next and final professional fight. Let's go straight on to Q2. What's the term for a wealthy business person who has earned excessive rewards? Fat cat, chunky monkey, or pudgy budgie? Which obese animal are we looking for? Well, they're all a little tubby, but which of these greedy guts has been piling on the pounds sterling? It is, of course, a fat cat. Fat cat, the answer I wanted. 72,000 of you, 386 got that right. Well done to you. The disapproving term was first used in the 1920s, but has spiked in popularity since 2007's credit crunch. Go figure. Who's reaching out to us on Twitter? Big hello to the Scape crew, the Freud's office, Anushka, Vicky and her mum Jo, and happy birthdays going out to Danny, Molly and Carmen. Now, now to question three. What would a French audience want if they yelled bis at the end of a performance? Biscuits, an encore, their money back. Well, they might want all three. But what I want to know is, what does bis mean? You can throw biscuits if you like, but they'll just keep chanting it. More eager ears than greedy guts. They want an encore. An encore's what they want. Money back, says David Halliday. Well, sorry, it was an encore, the correct answer. 62,000 of you got that right. 62,915 of you, to be precise. Bis especially means a musical encore, and you might see it written on sheet music where you want a repeat. Let's go on now to Q. Four. Which one of these food items is part of Mexican cuisine? Enchilada, arancini, or paella? Enchilada, arancini, paella. If you want to use the English pronunciation? Three scrumptious dishes. But which one of them has its home in Latin America? The oven-baked brother of the burrito. It's an enchilada. Enchilada is the correct answer. 61,561 of you got that right. Almost all of you going through. Well done. Paella is a very versatile rice dish from Spain, while arancini are Italian rice balls in breadcrumbs. On now to Q5. Whose catchphrase in the sitcom Dad's Army was, you stupid boy, Sergeant Wilson, Captain Mannering, Lance Corporal Jones. You stupid boy, that was the catchphrase, but who said it? He'd aim the phrase at Private Pike and then do something even more stupid himself. Bank manager turned platoon leader, it's Captain Mannering. One of our most popular sitcoms. If you knew that, you might be a fan, but only 33,540 of you did. We've lost quite a few along the way there. Uttered multiple times an episode, the Radio Times even included the phrase in their list of the 25 greatest put-downs on TV. 
Now, let's change it up. Q6. Which of these entrepreneurs founded a magazine at the start of their career? James Dyson, Peter Jones, Richard Branson. Three British tycoons, one correct answer. Well, they're all filthy rich now, but who first got his hands dirty in publishing? From printing pages to printing money, it's 67-year-old virgin Richard Branson. Richard Branson's the correct answer. Ooh, 17,000 of you, 966 got that right. This is really being run close, these questions. Branson may have left school with no qualifications, but he founded Student Magazine in 1968. Shout out to Oi York, Berwick you dad, says little boy 01. <laughs> Big up Swansea. Let's go on to Q7. Which movie was shot in Texas at the same time as No Country for Old Men? The Hurt Locker, There Will Be Blood, Michael Clayton. How is your movie trivia knowledge? Which ones were shot where? Well, I always get them mixed up, and now I know why. If any old men ignore the Coen brothers' advice, then there will be blood. And that's the answer I wanted here. 10,952 of you knew that. Well done. Not the friendliest of neighbours, the Coens had to pause production when smoke from a burning oil derrick was ruining one of the shots. Moving swiftly on to Q8. Which South American country was reputedly named by one explorer after the birthplace of another? Colombia, Argentina, Venezuela. Interesting one, this. Named by one explorer after the birthplace of another. If you gave Colombia a punt, I'm afraid a gondola would have been more appropriate. Known as Little Venice since 1499, it's Venezuela. Venezuela, the answer we wanted. 2,609 of you had that right. My God, a lot of you eliminated that one. That definitely counts as a savage question. A question sauvage. You would kind of eat that question with mash and maybe a little bit of ketchup. It was so savage. Colombia is obviously named after the explorer Christopher Columbus, while Argentina comes from the Latin term for silver. On now to Q9. Which All Punctuation Music Act released their seventh album in 2017? Duh, 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 qua, 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 or chick, chick, chick. Confused? You might well be. <laughs> you may have three question marks of your own, but that's not the band we're looking for here. America's punctuation-powered punk rockers, it's chick chick chick. Yes, 1,643 of you knew it. It's commonly pronounced chick chick chick, but the band will accept any repeated monosyllabic sound as their name. It's getting very, very tense now as we go into question 10. Which of the following phrases first appeared in an 18th century poem by John Gay? Breaking the ice, chill to the bone, cool as a cucumber. One of these phrases has been around since the 1700s. Which is it? Well, he's best known for the beggar's opera, but his coolest phrase came from one of his poems. No need to break the ice if you're cool as a cucumber. Cool as a cucumber, the correct answer. Another savage question. Oh my God, 1,462 of you eliminated. That was totally ferocious. There's just 241 of you remaining. It may sound modern, but the sunglass-toting vegetable first appeared in 1732's new song on new simile. Here we are with question 11. Which of these words comes from the Greek for a type of precious tree resin? Electricity, dynamite, protoplasm. It is, is it all Greek to you? Or do you have a clue? Which is it? They're all Greek originals, but which one literally grows on trees? From the Greek for amber, which can acquire a charge from friction, it's electricity. Electricity is the answer. 76 of you got that. We've eliminated nearly all of you now. 76 left. What would we do without electricity? We'd have to be playing this app by candlelight. I hope you're all fully charged because we are vaulting on to the final round. 100,000 of you started. We're down to 76 people. 550 pounds to play for. Everything is at stake now. On to the final question. Q12. 
which of these countries was the last to gain independence from the British Empire? Fiji, Malawi, Jordan, the last to gain independence. Well, my namesake, Dr. Livingston, came to what is now Malawi in 1859, but it became independent in 1964. Jordan was established even earlier after the war in 1946. A British colony until 1970, but independently smashing us at Rugby Sevens ever since. It's Fiji for the win! And we have 35 winners this evening! <laughs> Oh my goodness, what a ride, 35 winners. Think of how many people started this game just 12 questions ago. Congratulations to Davy Brown, The Silent 38, Mr. J Paris, Nuno Had a Dream, I think it is, and all of you winners today, you are each taking home 15 pounds and 71 or 72 pence. Well done. 15 smackers for 15 minutes of gameplay. Sorry if we lost you along the way. Getting through without a single mistake is not easy, but you are a winner if you made it through today. What an exciting game, HQTs. In case you forgot, I'm Beric Livingston, filling in for Sharon. It has been such a pleasure hosting you today. That's all for tonight, but I will be back tomorrow, 3 p.m., with another 550 pound game. Until then, rest your brains, and I'll see you soon. Good night. Yeah.